the bread. We just uh, started our twang out. What, what did we decide to call it, Rita? It was. Um, this is Intertwangment Television. It's where high tech meets redneck. And that's Rita Baloo, my <laughs> co-host. I'm the one thing I See, she's my redneck, my, my token Texan. Today we have Bill Wardy, the editorial director of Billboard. Howdy. Next Hello. to him, Chuck Dolphin, the country music editor of Billboard. And Katie Morse, who does social media for Billboard. And then our music guest, Rochelle Lene. Congratulations, Rochelle, today. I saw that you just number 40 on indicator for Billboard and I'm going to jump right in because one of the big questions I was curious about Bill was when you're when we're an uh, artist I hear indicator media base um, Billboard charts the differentiation between those three charts I've always well I mean they each you know they're each separate data sources so um, you know we use uh, Nielsen BDS to power our airplay charts uh, there's a media base chart out there too which I believe is owned by and, and operated by Clear Channel um, you know, I mean, I think they do, they do sort of similar things. Um, I think that there is, um, there's value in the, you know, the sort of slight differences in methodology and the integrity of the data. Uh, and we, we, we choose Nielsen as our partner for that. So, yeah. Good. Rita, question. Oh, I guess, I guess my question is, or the starting question is, obviously this, uh, this tweet chat was booked way before the changes. And uh, I guess my question is: is I haven't really, I don't really keep up with that as much. So, are you? Could you just explain that in 140 characters? Go. 140 characters. Uh, well, I guess I, I guess I just blew through half of them. Um, <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah. But yeah like, what's the Cliff Notes version? Yeah, the Cliff Notes version. Um, the Cliff Notes version is that we uh, a while back we made some changes to our Hot 100 chart where we. Uh, you know, we, we've we've continually let me let me take a step back. Actually, we've continually evolved the charts, right? The Billboard's 118 years old. We've been charting music for I think about 60 of those years, and there hasn't been um, there hasn't been like more than a probably like a six month period when we haven't um, haven't made some changes to the charts ever. Um, so you know, as the digital age has come upon us, obviously we've we've done a lot of um, uh, a lot of constant uh, assessing of the charts. So a little while ago, we changed the Hot 100 chart. Uh, to include uh, more digital, to include streaming, you know, all the different ways that music fans are uh, listening to music and interacting with music. Um, it went really well. Uh, I think we wound up with a chart that ultimately is a lot more accurate in terms of what people are listening to uh, and what music is having an impact. And um, so then we rolled out those changes to the genre charts. We thought that there was a nice simplicity in the idea that uh, the Hot 100 chart uh, would be the most popular songs in the world, or certainly in the United States, on any given uh, moment, and that uh, the genre charts would sort of inform that chart. So, Bill, before you, well, I guess, met. I guess actually, I mean, I guess to finish that answer, I, I guess what we did that has been a little controversial is we've included uh, digital play, we've included uh, you know everything from iTunes to Spotify. Um, in the uh, in the new genre charts, and uh, that's new because the genre charts for uh, up until just recently the dominant genre charts were basically 99.5 percent uh, radio airplay, right? Now it's been interesting, and, and I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. And I'm sure there might be a couple people tuned in that would also love to hear thoughts on this. Um, but you know, I, I think that like one of the things that a lot of people tweeted at me uh, or tweeted to me uh, in the day after we made this change. Uh, most people seem really pleased with the uh, with the chart changes, but there were some there were some vocal uh, folks that were less pleased. Uh, for the folks that were less pleased, the ones that kind of came at me, uh, they seemed to say, "Well, why are you doing this? Because once upon a time, the fans got to choose. Like on the old charts, the fans got to choose, uh, you know, what genre a song was and whether a song was worthy. And now that's not the case anymore. And I guess I just disagree with that notion because honestly." Uh, it's not like fans are choosing the genres of songs. Radio programmers are choosing the genres of, of songs. And these days, radio programmers means, you know, frankly, a, a small group of people in a centralized giant corporation, for the most part, making the choice about whether a song is, is playable on radio or not. Whereas by using services like Spotify and streaming, uh, st other streaming services and iTunes, I actually think that, that much better captures uh, what fans are actually choosing to engage with. So, anyway... 
Yeah, it's open season. We can talk all about this, or we can talk about anything anyone would like. I'm, I'm, I'm an open book. I got nothing to hide. I actually, I, I would, my question would be is as far as radio stations and coming to the digital age, uh, streaming stations, how are you going to interpret and bring them into this fold? Because as we're considering what's like going to vet them, is there any thoughts on that? How we're going to bring, I'm sorry, I didn't totally follow that. Okay, so someone like, um, I know Captain Jack from Renegade Radio, he just recently the, became a reporting station, sorry, uh, someone's typing, I had to mute you, um, he became reporting for like a media, <laughs> I was curious like how stations like streaming stations or even like digital stuff like Twitter, Facebook, what we're doing here, how will that stuff start to impact charts and do you see that like in the next six months, year, two years? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we created a, um, last year, maybe even two years ago now, we created a social 50 chart okay. that is expressly for uh, sort of non-purchased, non-music listening data. Uh, that chart is made up of buzz points from, you know, Facebook posts and, um, you know, and Twitter chatter and these sorts of things. Uh, so the social 50 is a great chart if you want to see uh, what sort of, um, how we're measuring that that space. And it's, and it's a pretty good chart, right? Like, that chart did a really good job of, uh, predicting the rise of Psy, for example, the Korean rapper uh, that most people now know for his Gangnam Style video, yes. um, you know, because it picked up on that buzz that was building online. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of when social or if social is gonna gonna be part of the Hot 100 or the genre charts, I don't think so just yet. Um, you know, I think that those charts are reflecting music consumption and that most of that social activity uh, ultimately creates uh, a pathway to music consumption and then we capture that consumption mm -hmm. but the but talking about music is not the same thing as listening to music or buying music and so I think that you know for right now we're gonna keep the genre charts about listening and buying music in terms of like reporting stations or things like that um, you know if you want to report to BDS that's really a conversation with Nielsen um, and if you're a new service that feels like they should be part of our charts uh, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to Silvio Petrolongo, who runs our chart department um, for us. Um, yeah, there, I mean, there's, you know, there, there's no shortage of ways. We're having conversations all the time with uh, new services that uh, we think should be part of, uh, part of the mix. Well, and interesting, I just saw a tweet um, asking about how do podcasts factor into the charting system, coming from Twang Nation. Thank yeah, you. they don't factor into the charting system right now. I'm pretty sure that they're not a part of, uh, of our Social 50 chart. Um, it's something, you know, I, I think, I think in one part, uh, I don't think that there's an aggregated, like the, the, the beauty of podcasting is people create a podcast and they distribute it kind of themselves, um, and, uh, or through iTunes, but it's a very, um, decentralized audience, right? Uh, right. you know, if I took the, the hundred most popular podcasts right now about music, chances are it would be from a hundred different sources. Um, so figuring out a way to aggregate all that information and sort of, Figuring out how to quantify it, haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, yeah, but if they're, you know, honestly, the number one thing that dictates these things is demand. Whether it's like a lot of fans coming at us on Twitter um, and saying, "Hey, you know, we really think that we would love, we love your charts, but we'd love a podcast chart. Can you make a podcast chart?" Uh, which isn't the case right now. There hasn't been a strong demand for that. Uh, or it's the industry coming to us on the business side and saying, "Hey, you know, we really think podcasting is a is a valuable part of the." the uh, music distribution ecosystem, we'd like you to kind of put a metric on that. Uh, that also hasn't happened yet. Uh, Katie, we have another question coming in for Bill. You wanna? Yeah, so Rogue Music Net tweeted asking where we think IPTV is headed with regards to music, and I think that kind of falls under the podcast category of something um, that's more future looking. So I'd love if, Bill, you might have a position on that. Yeah, I, I think IPTV is fascinating, right? Like, both in terms of a guy who's running, like, a media content company, um, and in terms of a guy who's watching closely uh, other music companies out there, thinking about their future, and, and you know, we're always trying to anticipate, right? Like I'm trying to anticipate where the media game is going, and the music companies are trying to anticipate where the music game is going. Uh, I think convergence is going to be the, the is already, and will continue to be the big story of the next uh, you know three to five years, and, and possibly well beyond. So this notion that um, TV can get a lot more social than it is right now is fascinating to me. Uh, this notion that apps are going to converge on the television space is fascinating to me. And when I say fascinating, I really mean like these are things that if I'm a betting man, um, I'm, I'm putting chips down. And Rita, by the way, your image just popped up. I don't think your hair is that bad today. 
<laughs> it's really bad. I don't have time to do the back, but I know. I'm just. I'm just curious, real quick. So basically, you're saying there isn't a, a Taylor Swift conspiracy because that really upsets me. I wanted there to be yeah. Team Fury, Team uh, Taylor, Bill in the yeah. Middle. Yellow I, I'm here to tell you right now that I just really don't care that much about Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, whatever people want to say about Taylor Swift, like it just it just couldn't possibly be less true. Um, <laughs> that yeah, really listen. did. I was so excited with that conspiracy theory. Yeah, listen. I mean, I, I get it. Uh, there's a couple things people need to know. Uh, if if like I, I try and take everyone seriously, right? Like my Twitter account, I publish it constantly when I go to. Uh, you know, speak at schools or speak at conferences. I let everyone know what my Twitter account is, and I tell people, and I'm sincere about this, that Twitter is the best way to reach me. Uh, the day after we made that change to the genre charts, uh, Katie will back me up on this. I spent literally a, a really good part of the rest of that day answering fans' questions on Twitter. I like the engagement, and I learn things from fans all the time. Um, but that said, you know, respect and regard should be a two-way street. Um, so what I want people to, to accept if they're going to come talk to me, because I really do welcome the engagement, is that, like, number one, um, you know, it doesn't behoove my brand to do anything that lacks integrity. Like, we are as good as our charts to some extent, and I would never in a million years do anything that would call into question whether or not, like, we're being fair and honest, right? Like, I believe strongly when it comes to charts that you can change rules, but you can't change rules. I mean, Sylvia will back me up on this, right? Like, because we have some great conversations about this sometimes. You can change a chart rule, but I'm never going to change a chart rule in response to one specific thing happening, right? So a good example of that, uh, Lady Gaga came out with an album and sold it for 99 cents, and I didn't personally feel that should probably count on our album's chart, but there was no way I was going to change the rules of the game in the middle of it being played. So, I, you know, I kind of took a step back, and we evaluated the marketplace for months after that and ultimately decided to make a change in that rule. And it's not just because of Lady Gaga. It was a marketplace rule that we decided to address. So with the, with the like, I know there's some upset uh, Carrie Underwood fans out there because the claim, and it was an incorrect claim, by the way, was that the week we made the chart change, uh, Carrie was going to go to number one. And that wasn't true. She was going to go to number two. Um, she went to number one this week on the, on the country radio chart. So then, in theory, she would have been number one on the on the country chart this week under the old rules. But we announced these rule changes weeks ago, right? We announced it, and we've been talking to the industry for months, literally, um, about what's going on. So there was no, certainly there was no timing element. There was no, I, I mean, a lot of fans that I saw out there were like, oh, you made this change because you knew Carrie Underwood was going to. It's like, I love Carrie Underwood. I think Carrie Underwood's awesome. I got to meet her backstage at the Billboard Music Awards. She came and spoke at our country music conference in Nashville a year or two ago. You could not find a, a, a sweeter, more wonderful person than Carrie Underwood. And the last thing I would want to do is hurt Carrie Underwood's feelings with it. You know, I mean, that's not what I'm after. But I think this is the best way to handle the country chart. And I mean, this notion that, you know, I'm somehow uh, best friends with Scott Borchetta or I'm whatever. <laughs> like, I, think, I think Scott's a great guy. I wish I had his head of hair. Um, Are you going to his house for Thanksgiving? You know, he's, got, you know he's, he's, he's making a lot of the right moves in the music business right now. But please believe me when I say that, like, I think the last time I talked to Scott was, I don't know when. And it certainly wasn't in any sort of time frame around these chart changes. Silvio, my chart director, I believe went to all the, I, I, I certainly hope he went to all the major uh, labels and players down in Nashville, as he did with every genre when we made this change, to socialize the notion that, like, this is what we're doing and this is why we're doing it. And tellingly enough, I mean, we didn't get a single, we literally got zero negative feedback from the music business about this chart change. They support this chart change. They believe in this chart change. They think it provides a more accurate representation of what fans are really doing. Um... And that's it. So, if, if, so any of the other genres or fans, any like Gaga fans, or I saw Mumford and Sons has been just beaming on the charts. Have you had any feedback from other genres, or is it just country? It's just honestly, it's not even just country. The only the, the only vocal uh, the only vocal opposition to this chart change that I've seen, not the only, but like ninety eight percent, ninety eight percent of the vocal opposition I've seen to this chart change. Uh, is either are from people that, you know, their handles identify themselves as Carrie Underwood fans uh, or they trace back very quickly to being Carrie Underwood fans. And I deeply respect that. I think it's wonderful that she has such an active fan base. Um, 
I don't know that Carrie Underwood herself would endorse some of the language that was used on some of these tweets, but um, but I think it's wonderful that she has an engaged fan base. I really do. Oh, yeah, I, I've I've never really all of this year and a half that I've been doing country music chat. I've never had anybody call me some of the names that her fans have been calling me. I was like shocked because I've met Carrie too, and she's very sweet and. Uh, it, even calling Taylor Swift names, there's no no need for that. We're country music. I mean, we're the country's music, right? And yeah. we're about. I, I assure, yeah. No, I assure you that if anyone in the world would not want their fans cursing at someone or speaking badly about another yeah. artist, it would be Carrie Underwood. Absolutely. So I question. You know, I question exactly. Well, anyway, that's that's it. I don't need. I mean, yeah, I, I, like no, I said, we're... Generally, I love I love passionate fans. I mean, that's what makes this whole business go round. It's what makes these stars the stars that they are. Um, and I, I think it's wonderful. Okay, so next question for you is, what is your favorite online music streaming? Like Spotify, Pandora, what do you use personally? You know, I use a lot of different things, honestly, depending on where I am. I tend to use Pandora in the car. Um, I use uh, Spotify when I'm walking around um, or I'm on the train. Um, I use YouTube when I'm sitting at my desk. Because when I'm sitting at my desk, I tend to want to like someone will have emailed me, and or somehow something will hit my radar, whether it's like Google News alerts or Twitter, and I'll want to check out a song or I'll check out an artist. And then I really like to get the full picture. I like to get the visual. Yeah. So a lot of times, uh, YouTube is what I'll use for that. Um, you know, I've been impressed with songs of uh, great for a party. Um, yeah, it just really just depends on uh, on on where I am and what I'm doing. What about? You know, content because we're you're more than just a chart. You're actually you know Billboard magazine, Billboard Biz, yeah. Billboard dot com, uh, content wise, and your editorial director. That means you're in charge of everything that we get to to read, watch, see. Um, what comes into play in your determinations, and you have a staff that's split split into genres. Tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, the first thing I do is I assess whether or not Taylor Swift can be a part of the story. I'm kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> jokes. Jokes. Right. Um, no, no, no. Really, the first thing I do is I, is I check to see whether it's important to Scott Borchetta, and then I move on. Um, of course. No, listen. Um, it's fascinating. I mean, there's so many. There's so many different. I'm going to get myself in so much trouble. It's there's fun. So many, no. Um, there's so many different ways to, to get uh, information. Um, you know, so everything starts kind of. I wake up usually around five thirty or six in the morning. Uh, I'm on Twitter. Uh, Twitter's my first radar. Uh, I'm checking my, my email, which includes my Google News alerts. Uh, that's kind of my second radar. Um, and that gives me a good sense, you know, first thing in the morning of, of what's going on. We also have um, Andy Gensler here, who works for Billboard.biz. Uh, he creates an email where he goes kind of around the web every morning, because he's an early riser, and sends me a list of, um, sends everyone on my staff, a list of kind of stories that are happening around the web that might have some relevancy, both business and consumer side. Uh, so that's kind of my daily. Those three things are my daily, uh, my daily feed. Um, and then, you know, I mean, in terms of, listen, what I do, just so you, maybe it's maybe it's interesting to some folks, or, or maybe you'll understand it, um, is uh, there's the you know there's Billboard.com and all the content on that. There's Billboard.biz and all the content on that. Uh, there's the weekly print magazine we do for the business. By the way, Billboard.biz is the business website for Billboard. Billboard.com is the music fan website for Billboard. We're very proud of that. Uh, both sites have grown tremendously in traffic over the last two or three years. I mean, tremendously. Um, we went from about 4 million uniques to about uh, 12, 13, actually 13 million uniques this month on Google Analytics uh, for Billboard.com. Uh, we went from about 150,000 to about 450,000 on Billboard.biz. Um, and uh, our, print ma our print magazine is holding strong. Um, and then uh, we also do, like, you know, a lot of other things, too, like the, the conferences that we throw. Uh, we do about six to eight, nine a year um, where we get the business together with people who want to learn more about the business, the business networks with themselves. Um, I program all those, my team, uh, the Billboard team, uh, under my leadership programs all those conferences. And so there's a lot of different things that we consider content. Twitter, uh, our social pages, you know, that Katie does such an amazing job running. Yay. Uh, yes, you do, Katie. Katie, Katie. Katie. Um, you know, uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of that's that's kind of how I think about the information, and, and um, it's uh, kind of how I get it, and that's what I do. Awesome. Uh, so there was a question. Did you see the one that said you answered the three times? Do we want to address that? It. I think we've already gone past that. Um, Katie had one over here on the side. Are you seeing anything, Bill? I mean, uh, Katie, a question. I want to make sure we get to everyone. Uh, 
You Rochelle want me to take myself off mute? Um, Rochelle, oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, go for it, Rochelle. I think I'm seeing a lot of stuff that Bill and I have spoken about over, I think, the past week since we saw the feedback coming back from Twitter. I mean, obviously, it's country fans that have feedback for us. It's R&B fans. We definitely know that this is a very large conversation. Um, and Bill, I don't know if people saw his Tumblr post about it, but um, Bill and I definitely had a conversation along with Sylvia, our charts manager, and you know, we were all talking about all of this feedback, and you know, we did address it in a Tumblr post. We've definitely been addressing it via tweets. You know, we're we're an organization that does pay attention, even if we don't at reply everyone. Rest assured that it is definitely part of my and everyone's job here to pay attention to that. So we are seeing all of the feedback, and I know that Bill is quite frankly exceptional for someone in his position for being available to respond um, and responding with a human voice. So. Thanks, Katie. Okay, oh, Rita. Rita's, uh, Rochelle's got a question, and then Rita. Let me, let me just say, and then I, I want to hear Rochelle's question. I'm happy. If there's more questions about Carrie Underwood or, or this chart change, I'm not, I mean, I, I'd love to, I'm happy to talk about it. Please don't keep any questions from me. Oh, wait. I don't want to. Can we open oh, no, it up? Actually, the, most of the questions were stuff you'd already covered, but go, uh, go ahead, Rochelle, and then we'll go back over to Rita, and we'll come back to Carrie. Wish Carrie was here. Rochelle. <laughs> Um, hi, Bill. It's nice to meet you, actually. Yeah, but, hi, um, Michelle. Yeah, I just I have a few questions, actually. Um, one of them is about the chart, and it's kind of a little bit uh, broad, but I'm wondering what percentage of the new chart is made up now from streaming, um, things like Spotify, um, Pandora, and like what of those are being covered? Is it pretty much anything that we're used to using? Um, is YouTube a part of it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Okay. Um, it changes from week to week because of the way the algorithm is set up. It's a it's a little bit um, it's a little bit complicated, and you know I kind of wish Sylvia was here to, to, to speak to it a little better than I could. Um, but generally speaking, I, I believe it's somewhere in the area of like you know when you take all these digital sources together, it's probably somewhere in the area of I'm I'm gonna say and, and like don't hold me to this because I'm just sharing like ballpark information. But I'm gonna say it's probably about forty percent digital. And that includes like streams, and that includes downloads, and all these different things. That's in line with the Hot 100. Will that include things like um, the new Xbox music format and things like that? Yeah, I think um, I, I'm reasonably certain it will. We have a lot of different data collecting partners. Um, like Xbox is going to launch. We actually get our streaming data. Well, it goes through Nielsen for processing. But we did this deal at uh, the Media Music Conference a year or two ago, uh, where a coalition from uh, NARM. I believe, which is the uh, was it the National Association of um, Record originally? I mean, it's it's a retail it's a retail association, um, and um, they brought us. You know, they were like, we've kind of aggregated all these streamers. Would you like to include this? We'd love for you to include this in your charts. And I was like, of course, yeah, hundred um, percent. So I think that I suspect that the Xbox streams will probably become uh, part of that feed, and we'll wind up including it. We don't currently include uh, YouTube and Vivo. Um, I wake up every morning trying to figure out how to get uh, good, clean data from YouTube and Vivo. I think YouTube and Vivo are working on getting us better, cleaner, cleaner data. Um, it's not for a lack of wanting to do it. It's just because at this moment in time, uh, YouTube and Vivo are still working to perfect their own sort of data monitoring capabilities so that we can, because we're not going to include anything in the billboard charts that we can't be a thousand percent confident in. Right. So if that if that if that makes sense, then um, but I but you know do I do I want YouTube and, and Vivo to be part of these charts? Like my God, yes! I think it's it's a real um, obviously it's you know it's, it's a little bit of a hole there that we need to fill. Cool. And then I, my my one other question um, was as the new artist myself, um, how do how do you choose um, content or what artists to feature? How would a new artist get on your radar at Billboard? Yeah. Well, I mean. Uh, the first thing, obviously, is is uh, you need to be signed to Scott Borchetta's label. Um, <laughs> Don, can you uh, rap the pony dance like like yeah. like you're in Korea? I think. Wait, well, I'm sorry. What was that, Rita? <laughs> I was making a, a a gangster, whatever it's called, the Gangnam Style. Joke. Oh, the Gangnam Style, the, yeah, the disco pony. Oh wait, are you gonna uh, Gangnam? Are you gonna do it for us, Bill? No, I'm sure not. Oh, come on. <laughs> I would if I was better at doing it, but you know my my feet just get tangled up. It's that whole one step, two step <laughs> thing. Very, it's not as simple as it looks. Um, so uh, the best way for a new artist to um, to to get some content or get some coverage in Billboard, uh, probably the number one question I get 
Um, are you really a new artist, by the way? Like, you literally just started playing yesterday, or have you actually been an artist for a long time now? Me? I, I've been an artist for a long time, but um, I just signed with Momentum um, at the beginning of this year. Congratulations. So, yeah, thank um, you. Thank and you. Yeah, she just said she's on the charts, but... She's gotcha. also a Belmont grad. Nice. Excellent. Excellent program there, Belmont. Listen, I, I look for stories, right? Like, I think that there's other magazines that might randomly write about uh, just albums that they happen to really like, and we'll do that occasionally. Mm -hmm. But the best way to get into Billboard is to show some movement. You know, uh, did you play for uh, 100 fans, uh, you know, last time you were in town and now you're playing for 300? Like, I want to know about that. Did you, um, you know, I mean, like, I want to see, I like to tell growth stories. I like to make people aware of artists that are legitimately starting to happen, right? Uh, I think it's, I think there's, like, a lot of other people in the hype cycle that will kind of help make you happen, right. but I'm interested in, in really, like, being the first to spot at an early stage um, artists that are credibly, like, starting to build, Um so there's a lot of new artists that are obviously signed to record deals all the time, although you've made it through like a really important and, and very impressive first step of your career. But now it's like, you know, how, how can you, what email can you send me in the next like week or month or year that's going to sort of lay out, um, you know, a clear trajectory of like, well, I was here and now I'm there, right? That's what, those are the kind of things I'm looking for. Although that said, and like I said, sometimes I just fall in love with an album or an artist and then I champion them. And I can't tell you how to do that right. because, you know, I, I can tell you that, you know, people tweet me their, their links to music probably like 10 times a day. I very, very rarely click those because I consider that to be spam. Yeah. A lot of times if, I'm, if I have a minute, um, I'll, I'll actually click the handle of the person that tweeted me that music. And if like, if like the last 10 tweets are the exact same tweet but with a different app handle, so it's like, hey, at B Wordy, which is my Twitter handle, like, uh, you know, I've really been following what you do, and I'd love your, your feedback on my music. But then they send that exact same tweet to, like, 30 other, 30 other journalists or 30 other people around the business. Yeah. Then it's like, okay, you know, that's just like, that's, I don't have time for that. But usually it's just not the best way to reach me. I mean, I, it just has to hit my radar in an organic way. Someone's got a, so, you know, um, someone else telling me, hey, have you checked this out? Someone who doesn't have a stake in your music saying, I really love this song or I really love this artist, that means a lot to me. Um, me, like, I go out a lot, you know, and so if I happen to be, you know, next time I'm in Nashville and I happen to walk into a club and you happen to be the band that's on stage, um, you know, that's great. You know, I'm a big believer in, in like, artists with chops who can play a live show. Um, anyway, I hope that answered your question. I mean, there's no magic formula. Yeah. Excellent. I was going back to now, now question for you, Bill. Uh, genre. No, I was talking to you yesterday and how you got started in the music business. I think uh, you said you were a raver. I want to hear more about this. <laughs> We've got to uh, hear about Raven Bill Wordy. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, I'm sure I'm sure that all the all the country music fans that, that tune into your your show are are really interested in my raving. Background. They're like, what's a rave? No, come how on. How your brain do you have from ecstasy? Like, have you I, had that? How, how many? What's that? <laughs> you know, you can get your brain scanned, and you can see how many holes you have in your brain now from the ecstasy. Yeah, well, you know, Miles Davis. Used to, Miles Davis used to always talk about how um, the best part of music was the space between the notes, and I think the best part of neurological function is the space between the brain cells. Did you have um, a pacifier on the screen? No, no pacifiers. Listen, I, you know, I went through when I got to college. I went through a lot of different music scenes. Um, I was fascinated by, you know, obviously like the sudden freedom I had and. And I loved music, and, and I loved um, that magic moment. And I love this in any style of music, that magic moment when a crowd is united around, like, an artist that's just really hitting their stride, whether it's, you know, Bruce Springsteen uh, right before the encore, or it's, you know, a rave at, at 3 in the morning when, you know, the lights go low and it's just, like, you know, a great beat, or, or it's a rock show, or it's a country. Like, you know, I love, I love it all. I mean, you know, when, when music just hits that point where it takes off and takes, like, 500 or 5,000 or 50,000 fans with it. That's just like that's an electric thing. Uh, that's the, that's like the most one of the most powerful things I've I've seen in my life, and I've I've been blessed to see a lot of things in my life. Um, so yeah, I mean, rave was rave was where I was when I was leaving college. Uh, I was going out to a lot of um, you know I, I saw a lot of sunrises and and um, went to a lot of underground clubs, and it felt like there was something really cool happening there. And there was something really cool happening there because. 
a lot of that that musical, like a lot of those production styles, you know, now, you know, 10, 12 years later, A, they're hot again, right? EDM is what we call it these days, and it's suddenly the, the white hot thing. But B, I mean, like, you know, that production never went away, right? Like the pop charts are full of 808s and, and like, um, you know, electronic sounds. And, um, you know, it's it's interesting to me. I don't know. I just, I had a great time in that scene and, and um, met a lot of the people that wound up, um, you know, I was going to New York for parties, and that's how I met, you know, some folks at a little magazine called CMJ, which is how I wound up with a job as a copy editor at CMJ, I'm, I'm, which at the time had a monthly music magazine for fans. And um, because I was going to raves, I was learning about parties through, like, telnet chats and, and uh, listservs. So I was sort of on the cutting edge of social back then, not because I thought I had to be on the cutting edge of social, because that's where I found out about where I was going to go to a party. And uh, so when everything started to unfold with, like, Napster and MP3s and all this stuff, I mean, it was all... I was kind of in the right place at the right time, and um, yeah, always really fascinated by the intersection of uh, culture, technology, and law. Um, and and you know, I wound up on a music path, but I could have just as easily wound up on a path of like the way it was affecting the Hollywood business or the way it was affecting uh, you know the book industry or, or something. But music was was sort of more natural to me because it's, it's how I spent my my, my time. Do do you sing or play any instruments or do anything like that, Bill? Um, I sing when I'm alone. <laughs> and uh, and really only then, uh, out of respect for the people that might be with me, uh, <laughs> you know, um, I played saxophone until uh, sixth grade, and then it um, and then it was stolen from uh, my my grade school band room, and that was it for my saxophone aspirations. Um, no, I, I'm not a um, I'm not a musician. I don't confuse myself with being a musician. Um, I have enormous amount of respect for people who are. Um, but I'm not a I'm not a musician. All right, so Rita, ask him ask him your question. I have a whole list of questions, and none of them are really like appropriate to the actual serious Billboard questions. But okay, so you did work. Those with are your rules, not mine. I didn't say they had we, to be actual. Oh no, no like my my questions are never real. Like I, yeah. you know. So I want to hear about the Rolling Stone days. Was that after the raving? That was uh, well after the raving. Yeah, I mean, I still love electronic music, and I still will go out from time to time. Although, you know, I have a six-year-old and a two-year-old at home now um, that, are, that are my sons, and and um, you know, my wife is fond of telling me that Bill, you can you can go out and stay out as late as you want, but at six thirty in the morning, you're waking up with the boys, um, which <laughs> well, tends to put a crimp know. in your in your you know uh, attempts to see the sunrise. Also, I mean, listen, I'm 38 years old now. I'm not a uh, I'm not. I'm not 25 anymore. So it's um, the recovery time from having an epic night out is uh, just a wee bit longer than it used to be. Um, but uh, but yeah, Rolling Stone was was amazing. I mean, I, I spent uh, one year there. Um, I had been writing for them as a freelance journalist. It was the magazine I read when I was a kid growing up. Um, Jan Wenner's story of how he started this music brand was really inspiring to me. Um, you know, in fact, I wanted to start a magazine at one time and. Uh, when I came to New York once as a as a kid in college, I walked in the door at Rolling Stone um, and asked to speak to Jan Wenner so I could tell him about my idea for a music magazine. And luckily, the uh, the attendant at the front desk took kindly on me and like didn't call the cops. But um, <laughs> but I always had this thing for Rolling Stone as a way for uh, for Rochelle to get on your radar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, not a good idea. It's good. I might call the cops. No, I'm kidding. Rochelle seems like a lovely person. I'm sure I wouldn't have to call the cops. Uh, Who's the most famous person you ever partied with and you don't remember? Like, I want to hear some rock star stories. If you're going to be something, man. You know, I just, I'm a, I'm a vegan who just drinks water. Um, I like to exercise for fun. That's That's the whole story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, I'm we're kidding. Not None of that's that. true. Um, <laughs> yeah. Listen, I mean, well, the vegan part is actually true. I, you know, listen, I'm um, I'm trying to think of stories that that don't make me sound like a jerk for sharing. I uh, know, but those are my favorite stories. I'm a blogger. Hello, I want some. Yeah, records. yeah, we're we're all about the fun. I mean, this isn't meant to be like, you know, where we're judging. We just yeah. want to know. We yeah, want to know. It's, it's just the five of us, and whoever happens to be watching and tweeting. No, yeah, we don't. Um, nobody, nobody watches our stuff, right, Rita? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. When I was uh, when I first moved to New York City and I was a journalist and I was covering the uh, EDM and dance scenes, um, I did get an education in the uh, and I'm not going to name names here, but I really it was like the classic thing, right? Because I was covering this like this party scene and a lot of those DJs who you know stayed up all night to play for crowds, there was no shortage of partying that was going on, and so it was not uncommon for me to sit down with my at the time analog tape recorder, you know, and hit record 
to do an interview, and the artist pulls out like you know a sack of foil and proceeds to do like rails of cocaine or you know pop pills or things like that. And as a young like twenty, uh, you know, I mean, I moved to New York City. I think I was twenty three, twenty four years old. Uh, I was like, oh my god, like I can't believe, you know, like you know, do you know I'm a journalist, right? Like you probably shouldn't be doing it anyway. It was a, uh, it was it was enemy. an education. Haven't you seen Almost Famous? You're the enemy. I can't be doing that. <laughs> Well, but just like you know, if you're like the if you're the enemy that actually like lives and breathes their world, like the, you kind of you, you form these bonds sometimes. There's times when artists or label presidents or managers will tell me stuff, and I'm like, don't tell me that. Like I don't, you know, it's like I'm like I can't. I'm not your, you know, I'm your friend, but I'm I'm gonna be a journalist first, always. Well, who who's your most who's your most famous person in your phone? We want to know who's the most person in my phone. Yeah, let's yeah. go through it. Let's call. Let's P. go through your phone. Can we call P Diddy? And Lady Gaga. Me. Can we call Lady Gaga? Okay. Here's a better think, question. Um, Do you have any country artist in your phone we could call? Do I have any country artists in my phone? Like direct line to country artists? Yeah, just like their phone number. Who can we no. call? No, I don't. You can't call Taylor Swift? No, I can't call Taylor Swift. I'm sorry. <laughs> what about I know that's disappoint a lot of Carrie Underwood fans out there, but... but um, <laughs> but I, I cannot call... Because you know, Taylor, Taylor, Taylor's a big artist. I mean, I would call... I might call her manager, I might call her, you know, Scott, or I might call, like, Paula, her, her publicist, but I'm not going to, I respect the boundaries, honestly. I mean, there's a couple of artists that, organically enough, I've become friends with just because over the years we've, we've wound up in situations to become friends, but I don't, um, you know, I, I think um, if there's a reason for me to be talking to an artist, I love to talk to, the, to an artist, but, but I, don't, I don't collect phone numbers. So we I, can't I just there's... prank call somebody right now? No. Frank, call somebody right now. Well, yeah, I don't think it'll be super satisfying because I can't put all six of you on the line. Well, you just put him on speaker. Just tell him. Hear it. No, I'm not going to do that. He's, he's, right. See, this is why artists trust me with their phone numbers because they know I'm not going to do something irresponsible like that. I'd never give my number to. I wouldn't give my number to Rita. Like she doesn't even have my phone number. Liar. Uh, I'm more uncomfortable with Rita having my Twitter handle at this point. <laughs> I'm going to give her your oh, phone number. I'm going to give you your email address. You're in trouble. Thanks for that. This um, question, I'm, I'm getting texted like crazy, and I know that we have covered it, but, I mean, obviously, I don't think people are really clearly understanding it, or maybe they just want to ask again. I'm still getting the pop genre airplay question, like, do you think that all the genres are becoming one, and is that what Billboard is, is doing? Yeah. I'm going to look, hold on, give me one second here, because I want to do something. We're going to call. We're Here's gonna... our country songs chart right now. So... Let me just make sure I'm looking at the. Um... Country songs. Number one is Taylor Swift, Never Ever. Number two is Carrie Underwood, Blown Away. Number three is Florida Georgia Line. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Florida Georgia Line and their song Cruise. Uh, number four is Wanted by Hunter Hayes. As you go down this list, Lee Bryce, Jason Aldean, Luke Bryan, Dustin Lynch, Taylor Swift, Jake Owen. Easton Corbin, Rascal Flatts, Miranda Lambert, Tim McGraw, Kip Moore. Like, I don't think the names I'm reading are names that people who aren't fans of country music, by and large, I mean, some of those have, have crossed over a little bit. Some of them have crossed over more than others. But my point is, that's a healthy country chart, right? Like, that's not, that's not a bunch of artists that, like, you know, you're not, it's not like I'm reading down the country chart and it's like Jay-Z and Jermaine Dupri and and, you know, Lady Gaga, like, these are country artists on a country chart. And you get down, you know, you, you keep going down that list. It's like Casey Musgraves, Kristen Kelly, Little Big Town, Chris Cagle, Eli Young Band, Kix Brooks. I mean, these are, these are country artists. So this notion that somehow, um, somehow I've taken, like, this chart, and because we're, we're recognizing other genre airplay for country artists to determine which country songs are the biggest country songs... And that somehow that means like George Strait can never be on my chart again. It's just not true. People need to give this chart change. Give it a few weeks and look at the chart. People are screaming that the the, the little the tiny fraction of fans that are up in arms about this, they're they're screaming that the sky is falling while the sky is still up and there's no evidence that the sky is going to fall. I so I the get it. Thing with uh, with just because I read a lot of stuff online mm -hmm. and the blogs and stuff and people it's are always so true. Upset. Oh, obviously. But the people, to me, they're so upset. They're, they should be more upset at the song. I mean, they don't like that's not a country song. Well, talk to country listen, radio. Listen, and, and you know, 
I mean, I think that there's other folks even on this on this line that would speak to this better than I would, but it's clear to me that over the last 5, 10, 15 years, there's been a change in the style of, of what's what country radio plays, right? And there's certainly plenty of people that I talk to who, you know, maybe privately because they work in the business and they don't want everyone to know this, but, like, that don't like that change, that say country music is going pop. But... Right now at this moment, this doesn't mean it's going to be this way forever. Right now at this moment, country radio, country music, it is going pop a little bit. And part of the reason that's happening is because um, is a real is a real uh, tribute to country, right? Like when I drive around, when I, when I travel a good amount, when I drive around the country, a lot of times when I'm driving a car, I like to listen to guitar music. And are you, you guys still there? Yeah, yep. I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, my screen just went... Uh, my screen just went blank. There we go. When I'm driving around the country, I like to listen to guitar music. And in a lot of cities, the only place I can go for guitar music anymore is country radio. Brad Paisley. I like to hear guitar. And like rock music doesn't rock radio and top 40, like they don't play guitars anymore. So there's a lot of new fans coming to country. And maybe that's diluting the taste of country. I, I don't know. But philosophically, if you're asking me, like the thing that some of these fans have had, had an issue with is that we're taking pop we're taking other formats airplay and we're attributing it to country songs for the purpose of ranking that country chart. Now, you can say, no, 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 that country chart should only be about what songs are the most popular at country radio. And if you want to know the answer to that, then go to the country radio airplay chart. We're still keeping it. We haven't shut it down. But our viewpoint is philosophically that these genre charts, whether it's R&B or country, should be a list of the biggest country songs in the world right now. And so if we identify a song as country, then it then all of its its airplay travels with that song. And that I'm completely at peace with that decision. The business is completely at peace with that decision. Most people are completely at peace with that decision. And by the way, Carrie Underwood fans, if you're watching, this rule is only going to benefit Carrie Underwood because she's an artist that actually crosses over a good amount. So I, I hope never to speak of this again, <laughs> only because <laughs> only because there's um only because I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot now. Not because I don't I, I, I don't yeah, want to with any idea. I, I just feel like I've, I've been over backwards to to like really explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. And I feel like generally uh, the the overwhelming majority of people support what we're doing. And for those that don't support it, I think I've articulated why we're doing it and 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 how we're doing it. And I also think, by the way, that the country chart in this week's Billboard magazine is a really good representation of some really good country music. So I'm going to leave it at that, unless anyone has any other questions on that point. Do we have any questions besides the chart questions? Are we good? Are we good? And I know I've taken up way more time than Bill had for us today. Oh, I'm. Uh oh, Rita got Chuck. You haven't asked any questions. Do you have a question for yeah. Bill? Is he Are your you boss? Serious? Can you ask him? He's your boss? Chuck's, Chuck's question is going to be, can I get a raise, dude? I know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bill, Chuck, so you do great work for us, and I really appreciate it. Do you Thank really you. think that Chuck listens to all those albums? Because he can do 25 album reviews a day, and it's not even physically possible to listen to that many albums. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck, Chuck is like a savant with country music. He is. I know. Oh my gosh! Watch we watched him on the Jason Aldean. You guys did a chat and great job with that. Uh, the beginning of the week, uh, Billboard and Chuck, you did a an excellent um, like a, a video chat with Jason Aldean. Now, Chuck, question: um, As far as like when you're Billboard six one five inside of Billboard, how are you determining content there? And if, and since I have a lot of like musicians and radio people that are following us, how would people get your attention? I think typically a lot of that, you know, like Bill said, you kind of have to have a story that goes along with, you know, whatever they're promoting. It's not enough necessarily just to have a new album out, even though, of course, publicists, you know, really kind of, you know, want to go after you heavy, heavily when they do have a new project. But I think there needs to be some type of backstory to, you know, give that project, you know, a little something special. I think, you know, Broken Bow and the Green Room PR have done a great job with Jason Aldean this week, having him at a lot of different places at once. Of course, you know, next week, uh, Taylor Swift, I know we've talked about her quite a bit, but, uh, you know, Big Machine's got her everywhere next week. They're actually going to have a four-hour radio remote in the morning and a four-hour radio remote in the afternoon next week at the Country Music Hall of Fame that I'm going to be covering next week. So I think there needs to be some type of story behind the story to kind of, you know, make it a little more appealing than just so-and-so has a new album out, even though, you know, we do a lot of stories whenever artists, you know, have new projects out too. Excellent. 
Well, I know, Bill, I know we only had you for a half an hour, and you've been so kind to give us 48 minutes, and um, I appreciate your time. Is there anything you'd want to leave here and you'd want anybody to know about you, know about Billboard that is just, like, well, what could you think that you want? One thing you want people to walk away thinking about this. Well, I mean, I think that um, I'm proud that Billboard is like a, um, is an engaged brand. You know, I, I think that it's the role of a media company to be engaged in, uh, in 2012. And that doesn't mean that a vocal minority gets to dictate our policies or, or how we want to view what we do. Um, but, but I really do appreciate the fact that there's passionate fans out there that have a strong point of view and, um, and want to engage. Uh, and it's why I spend the time I do. Uh, I, I credibly, literally enjoy it, right? Like, I, there were definitely fans that asked certain questions on Twitter that uh, changed the way I thought about things, or certainly that made me go back to Silvio and say, hey, you know, did we think about this this way? And then Silvio would have a great answer. And, um, you know, I mean, I think, um, I think it's important to be a little bit, I think transparency is really the buzzword of, of the day and, and should remain that. And I think that you're seeing it, you're seeing it creep into a lot of walks of life. And I think that the more it creeps into even more important forms of life, if you can imagine a more important sector of life than Twitter and music, um, you know, if there was more transparency in government, if there was more transparency in, you know, all these different sort of, sort of the way things happen in this world, it'd be a better place. So I, I just, um, I really welcome the dialogue. I, I thank you for a chance to, um, to, to engage a little further. I think what you're doing is amazing. I, I really, I, I've learned a lot from the experience. Um, I think that Rita's a little bit creepy, but it's cool. <laughs> Uh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Aww. We're learning, we're learning every day and just watching no. brands Whoa, like you guys. How do I hear that every day? Yeah, I, well, you know, if you're hearing something every day, you might want to think about it. Um, <laughs> no, and, and I think I think more than anything, listen, Billboard is, we're, we're engaged in a lot of different ways. Um, where uh, come January, I think we're going to have some really exciting uh, things to unveil. We're, we're looking at a new website, we're looking at a new print <laughs> magazine, we're looking at all sorts of, um, <laughs> see, your dog is a carry on with him. <laughs> uh, we're, you know, we're we're looking at a lot of different um, a lot of different um, new platforms, and I'm really really excited about it. Like, you know, giving our charts a facelift, giving our magazine a facelift, launching like new products so we can get the right content on the right platforms. Uh, and I'll be back here hopefully if 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 uh, you're gracious enough to to invite me back. I'll be back here maybe in January, and we'll talk about some of these changes. Absolutely, can't wait. Um, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Bill. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Rochelle, you're on my radar now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be checking out your music. Um, Rochelle, and speaking of that, we well done gonna, sound effect. I know, awesome. <laughs> I don't think we're that was gonna weird, go. though the way that they, that they didn't clap at first, and then suddenly they clapped rapturously. I know it was crazy. Um, I was gonna say Rochelle's gonna sing a song for us and take us out of this chat. You can listen in on here, or you can stay in the chat. But after she sings, um, I'm gonna close up the chat, and that's how we do it when redneck meets high tech. Go, Rochelle, because we all have to mute. Thank you, Bill. Thank you so much. I'm going to stick around for Rochelle's song. Awesome. Go, Rochelle. I'm muting everyone. Change your thing over to studio, girl. All right. Can you all hear me? How's everyone hearing me? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Thumbs up. Perfect. Something. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, if you guys want to go back with me to a, for a second to summer, this is my favorite summer song, so. Hey, nothing better than some sticky summer loving Who knows how far we'll go Windows down, I feel the hot air Lip gloss sticking to my long hair Feel the heat roll down my back There ain't nothing wrong with that People standing on the street side Stay right this case and at the stop line. We don't notice them at all Let them watch us fall so far So deep, so fast, so breathe Hey, no
jump in Back of the truck is a nice place To slow down and let the world wait We don't have to think too much We got this moment and that's enough For me with your touch So as a Teacher clapping. Thank you guys again. Thank you. Thank you everyone for tuning Thank in today. And we'll be back next Wednesday. We'll, we'll have an Americana we'll panel. We'll be talking about Americana, talking about Americana in the USA, Americana, Americana everywhere. everywhere. Um, Thank you so much, Bill Wordy from Billboard. He's at B W E R D E. Follow him. Chuck Dolphin at C H U C K Dolphin D A U P H I N because the little things behind him. You're you're your logo is over your name, Chuck. And Katie Morse, thank you so much. You're at Miss Katie Mo and at Billboard.com. And of course, Rochelle Linnae at Rochelle Linnae and Rochelle Linnae.com. Thank you guys so much. And I don't know what happened. I think we scared Rita away. <laughs> Had a good day today. I appreciate everybody tuning in.